Algebra is all about using letters in place of numbers to automate processes. In this example, we're using a rectangle, and we need to find the perimeter and then the area of the rectangle. To find the perimeter of a rectangle, we start in one corner and measure our way around the outside edges. Here, our measurements are given as L and W. So if we start up here in the top left-hand corner, first we have an L, and then we turn the corner and have a W, and turn the corner and get another L, and turn the corner and get another W again. There's a formula that looks like this. P for perimeter equals L plus W plus L plus W. We can simplify that a little bit by grouping the L's and the W's together, which gives us P equals two L's plus two W's. And using the distributive law, we can actually pull the two out, since both letters are multiplied by the same number, and we get the most concise version, which would be P equals two times the quantity L plus W. Now, no matter what the dimensions of the rectangle may be, we know that we could just plug them in in place of L and W, multiply by two, and get the perimeter. Now, to find the area of a rectangle, you usually take one side and multiply it by the other. Well, in this case, since we have letters instead of numbers, we're going to do the same thing, just use letters instead of numbers. So we have the length of the rectangle, L, multiplied by the width of the rectangle, W, equals our area. And because this is algebra, obviously we didn't put an X in between there. That would be very confusing, given that X is the most common variable. We did use a dot, which is one of the more common ways. Another way to represent that might be just to put the two letters side by side. In algebra, that's recognized as multiplication. LW means length times width, and that's equal to the area. In this example, we need to use algebra to express the information from the word problem as an equation. The word problem tells us that Eric has some money in savings and that he wants to know how much more he needs to save up to buy a game that costs $98. We don't know how much money Eric has now, and we don't know how much he's going to need if we take the money that he has and put it toward the $98 cost of the game. So we're going to use two variables. One, S, represents the money that he's saved, and the other, M, represents the money that he needs. Now if the game costs $98, $98, and we take away the amount of money that he's saved, S, that should give us the amount of money that he needs to save up, m. So m is equal to 98 minus s. And that is the most concise version of our equation.